he made our living because Cluster was didn't sell, it never came to Berg even with their products. And at sudden, with these two products with Brian, we became, we got more attention, of course, and we got a lot or some some money for it because they sold about fifty thousand from each. That's a lot. At the time, it was a lot. I mean, not in one year, over 10, 15 years, but... And then by this river, this special song on his before and after science record, because he got this golden power, he was used, this, this song was used in films and so... So we're still living from this music. But where Cluster and Harmonia had been keen on collaboration, Kraftwerk were less forthcoming. Bowie had initially asked them to join him for his Station to Station tour as a support act, but they declined the offer, and although they were scheduled to record together, it never materialised. Nevertheless, released in January 1977, the first of Bowie and Eno's collaborations, Low, would bring experimental electronic music to a wider audience. What's uh, incredible about Low is the second side. I think the second side of Low is probably responsible for my sitting here. It's certainly responsible for an enormous amount of people starting to listen to experimental music. I would say without the second side of Low, the vast rock um, audience, the, the vast amount of people who are interested in rock music would never have heard Steve Reich, Terry Riley, or even some of this German electronica, because it was a, basically a portal, basically like a portal into all of this world. And it was such a brave thing to do, because it was basically extremely, uh, it had this coldness to it as well, and this kind of, you know, aridness to it. And it was, it, it all was, it seemed to be devoid of something. And, it, and some of it was a deathly sound, but it was fascinating, because it was such a brave thing to do. Tony was coming to produce Low, let's get this straight. And Eno was there, you know, assisting and stuff. If Eno wasn't there, I don't think Bowie would have been able to get away with putting this on the second side because Eno was there. It changed the whole dynamics of the thing. And it was a, certainly, a, it, then it, it put him more, more in a kind of, in, in, in the same frame as Kraftwerk and those bands. He then, it, it seemed to be the one trumpeting this music worldwide. And with the release of the second of Bowie's trilogy later in 1977, the singer managed to capture the totally alien world of the divided Berlin. While in the UK, punk music laid waste to the dominant rock scene that had been becoming progressively overblown throughout the decade, with heroes, not only did Bowie raise the profiles of the musicians of Germany, but also of lives outside of the typical Anglo-American experience. And this, in turn, would influence a new generation of musicians. Bowie went to Berlin to hide. But, of course, that, that German war, uh, that you couldn't, you couldn't... A city divided by a wall? I mean, a city, not even a country. Actually, a city in the middle of an entire country you couldn't even go to. This is what's so weird. It's like an island. And then, in, and then only half of that you could walk around the Kafustendam, etc. So I'm sure sitting in that flat, you know, going out to get the milk and just being David Jones again for David Bowie was a, him being reborn. And there, that city, that Berlin city, even though an island in the middle of nowhere, surrounded by people who had nothing, you know, rebuilding their lives, who can he relate to? Jump on a train, go to Dusseldorf, meet with Kraftwerk, yeah? These guys were also not pop stars, not going anywhere, but doing something brilliant. And again, that creativity, Bowie, Kraftwerk, Iggy, hands are by the wall, the environment. I mean, 
Heroes as a song with Brian Eno's tapestry background with Carlos Alomar on that guitar. I mean, that, 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 and then to do it in German. Ich, ich bin dein König und du, du Königin. You know, wir gucken sie schlagen für alle Seiten. Dancing wir Helden für einen Tag. I think just for one day, I mean, in that song, that, that song became now, for me, exactly what we were, i.e. we could be heroes for one night. We could dress up, get out of our grey, horrible, no future, Thatcherite Britain, and we could be somebody. We could look good, we could sit in that cafe, we could have a, a jeton, we could listen to beautiful music, and we could forget that really we've got to sign on tomorrow. We've got no job. We've got no future. Bowie's gone. Roxy has split up. We've got no heroes. The Sex Pistols have just said to everything. Let's do it ourselves. Let's make our own music. Certainly, um, the Eno Bowie thing is, is, was basically the green light for German musicians to really go for it, and they did in 1977 with Trans Europe Express. And it was with this album that Kraftwerk offered their creative input into what would become a classic year in electronic music. With a new concept and a still more technically accomplished sound, the German four piece continued to tread their own unique path through the 70s. Yet this album was less anticipated than their last two records, simply because of the commercial disappointment of radioactivity. Of course, it's apparently, if you had a hit record, you need a follow-up. Uh, this is true, I agree to that, uh, you need a follow-up, which could be played in the radio. Unfortunately, the, the single of radioactivity wasn't a hit. It wasn't a hit worldwide, it became a hit in France. And uh, that's why we played Friends, and I think that's where the idea of Trans Europe Express came, really, from that angle. Being, uh, of course, the first thing was the German uh, um, identity, and then uh, pretty much aware of the European uh, identity, which includes, of course, all the other European nations, and this idea was really much coming up at that time. It's a very European uh, theme again, yeah, it, it is really uh, something uh, from the historical point where I thought, great, uh, uh, they are really able to find things which are not connected to Anglo-American or uh, 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 international or whatever, and still uh, it is in a way very campy and it is in yeah and it is it, 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 the idea is like a film yeah it it uh, you start in 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 uh, paris yeah you go to in a train and, and you uh, end up in dusseldorf yeah and uh, i think that was the concept uh, uh, someone who is traveling through Europe, because at that time when Franz Europa Express was uh, uh, released, I think it was perfectly planned of Kraftwerk. Uh, everybody was discussing about the e European Union. Yeah, that was a new thing. <laughs> 